Walking the streets of Tehran and many other cities across Iran right now, you wouldn't immediately be able to tell that there were protests happening last year. But there are definitely differences, mainly in how women are dressing, whether they're covering their hair or not. To counter this, the authorities have also made some moves with the redeployment of the morality police. I'm Mazir Motamadi, online correspondent for Al Jazeera English based in Tehran. And between us, the impact of Masa Amini's death is still fresh in everybody's minds. It's now been a year since Masa Amini has died. She was a young woman who came to Tehran, the capital, with her family. She was stopped by the morality police. She was arrested, taken to a re-education center. But a few hours later, she collapsed when she was in that center. She was taken to a hospital and within three days, she had passed away. And within several days after that, protests had formed across Iran and people were chanting her name. I was surprised by just how much international attention this issue got. There were a lot of demonstrations in many countries. A lot of international players and figures and celebrities civilians got involved. It was especially surprising for me personally to see some uh, Western leaders, for instance, French President Macron calling these protests a revolution. And that was something that especially drew the ire of Iranian officials who condemned this sort of rhetoric. Growing up in Tehran, the rules on enforcing hijab and on women have been largely consistent. But there have been gradual shifts over decades. We had different forms of patrols in the streets that were being run by different organizations. And over time, they all merged into one force that is the morality police. For the past few years and up until last year, their operations were more or less consistent. You would see their vans from time to time in city streets or city squares. But since last year, everything's changed. A lot of women, especially in Tehran, in the streets, in cafes, in cinemas, everywhere, are choosing to forego their headscarves. Some of these women have them around their necks, so maybe they can quickly put them back up if a police officer or somebody warns them. But some people are not even carrying them anymore. For months, the morality police were no longer very visible in the streets of Tehran and other cities, but right now, it's been uh, over a month that they've been back enforcing their rules, but in a less confrontational way. The authorities are also focusing on a cultural aspect. So you'll see a lot of banners in Tehran and everywhere encouraging people to have their hijabs on properly and comply with the rules. There have definitely been changes, but uh, the main rules that enforce a mandatory hijab in Iran have not changed. As part of its response to the developments in the past few months, the government and the judiciary and the parliament have been discussing a new hijab law. And uh, this new law appears to include new financial penalties and other kinds of punishments for women. We don't have the details yet. We don't know when it's going to be implemented. Another recent development is that uh, a number of professors in universities have been expelled or otherwise let go from their positions and it does seem to be directly related to the protests and their support for protesters. Iran has seen several rounds of protests in the past few years, but uh, never had they seen such intensity and such scale, and it hadn't gone on for months on end like this. And Masa Amini's name always uh, was at the center of this. And some of the women I spoke with said that this was a basic human rights issue for them. They wanted to decide how they want to dress and whether they want to cover their hair or not. And they just wanted to take control for themselves. <laughs>